Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guests today are Hector and Christina from Joy Foods. I want to tell you a little bit about their fabulous product. You know, I love um, when I can introduce you to equipment or products, healthy vegan products that will make your life easier. And, you know, we t I've talked a lot about different machines to use to make plant milk. And I probably have all of them, but the easiest machine is no machine. And that would be <laughs> Joy. So they have some incredible products like a concentrate of cashew and almond. I have the cashew here to show where you literally, J-O-I means just one ingredient. You'll literally just add water. So, you know, you don't need a Vitamix, you don't need anything really. I mean, yeah, I guess you need some kind of a blender, but it could be a cheap one. But then they introduce something really cool because I try to avoid the higher fat nuts and seeds. Look at this, oat milk powder. This is instant. We did a whole show based on this product, but this is pretty cool. And now it even comes in smaller sizes. But this new product I'm going to show you, I need somebody to help me lift because I need them. <laughs> this is their this is their hemp seed concentrate. If they're going to show you some recipes using these products, they're going to talk about it. They've generously offered a 15% off code if you'd like to try it, which is below in the show notes. It will also be in the chat. And please welcome them to the show. It's nice to see you guys again. Nice to see you. Thanks nice. for having us. Yeah, well, congratulations. It's it's so cool to see like something that didn't exist that not only then exists and then it becomes successful. So congratulations on that. No, no, and thank you. You've been a huge supporter of us for a long time now. We've grown dramatically throughout the years uh, and in large part due to your audience. So we're, we're really well, grateful to be here. Well, you know, the thing is, is you, your, your product hits so many buttons. It's healthy. It's uh, it's organic. It's whole food plant based. It's free of all the stuff that I tell people to avoid, like sugar and oil and flour and salt and alcohol. And it, it makes people's lives easier because they end up saving money because they don't have to throw out boxes and cartons or even ones they make, you know, in bulk. And I mean, you can travel with it. It's um, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's like the perfect product. <laughs> We love that. We love thinking it's the perfect plant milk. Uh, and Christina, I mean, it, it, it really is. It yeah, is I mean, it tastes good. it tastes good and it has nothing bad in it. And you know, you can get plant milks now with nothing bad in it. You certainly can. I mean, they didn't used to have those with with just one ingredient like water and something else. But you know, it could be like eight dollars a bottle for those healthier ones. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. And the key to not having water in the bottle is the fact that we're really saving on carbon emissions our products being that they're in concentrate form it allows consumers to have this product shipped directly to their house without having to you know incur the cost of shipping something that is 98 percent water you can add water at home it's super easy to do or wherever you're going there's going to be access to clean water so we figured let's just focus on the really high quality ingredient and produce it in a way that's easy to use and to your point blend with any blender yeah. And, you know, when you think about it, like when I teach people weight loss, it's a concept called calorie density. Water is great because it adds weight and bulk and volume to the food. But for shipping, water it has to be expensive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the way to put this into perspective is one truckload of our hemp product, if you will, in this eight gallon container is the equivalent equivalent of nine truckloads of the competitor. Nine truckloads, nine times more trucking that you have to incur you know, uh, gas that's incurring, movement of pallets, it's a lot, a lot of waste inherent in the supply chain that we think we're undercutting and providing value to the end customer. Yeah, it's amazing. Was it your idea? Was it Tony's? Was it a, a combination idea? It actually started as a grad school product, a, a grad school project. So our, our co-founders got together. They're actually not on the call today. It's Tony, Izzy, and Dave. They were doing an MBA out in San Francisco, and they thought, you know, one of us is lactose intolerant. The other one really cares about plastic waste in the ocean and mitigating that. And uh, Tony at the time was really exploring with a vegan lifestyle and making his own plant-based milk by scratch. In fact, Christina is Tony's sister and they used to make uh, almond milk from scratch at home. Yeah, and we all know it's a labor of love, um, but even after you've put in all the effort, you're throwing away the pulp unless you're going to use it in, in some banana bread or something and it spoils very quickly because you're handling the nuts you're having to introduce heat when you uh 
um, run it through the Vitamix or whatever machine for uh, for some time. You're putting it through the nut milk bag again, introducing bacteria, so it spoils really quickly. Um, which is one of the reasons that I love our product as well. Is that once you make the milk and you put it in your fridge, it can last usually you know seven plus days without spoiling. Um, yeah, and what makes it unique? Going back to that story of of you know the grad school co-founders getting together and really trying to reinvent the way people are making plant milk is that we chose to pursue a unique form factor, which is pastes and powders. And that has a lot of benefits, mainly that you're not shipping water, but also that you're using all of the raw material. We use 100% of the hemp seed, we're using 100% of the almond, 100% of the cashew. So it's a very weight, uh, waste light um, process. And to couple that, and what's, what becomes really interesting is that when we break down these raw materials, we're using something called a cold milling process. So we're not introducing heat and any part of the supply chain or production process. We're actually breaking down the almond and the hemp using cold temperatures and cold milling techniques that allow it to be preserved in its natural integrity, allow you to have a product that doesn't go rancid and ultimately a product that tastes really great whenever you're ready to use it. Yeah, it's incredible. And you know, the other thing is, and, and it's not that I never buy plant milk, especially you know if I'm out of town or sometimes doing a demo for somewhere else, but one of the things I learned a couple of years ago when I started hosting the GI Health Summit, that some of the plant milks in a box, while they tasted really good, had things in them that are not so good for your gut, especially your GI health, certain types of emulsifiers, carrageenan. And so that's when I got really nervous about, you know, continuing to buy and do the plant milks. That's when I got my natural milk machine to make my own, which I still do, but like it's so much, it's so much easier to just do this. Well, and most people have a blender at home already. Even if it's a, a blend jet, a personal blender, uh, you know, anything will work with our product. Yeah, in fact, and you talk about travel. This is one of the things that we're really excited about, these single serving oat stick packs. So this basically makes one, one serving of oat milk um, and you don't even need a blender. I'll take a simple whisk here, whisk it up and you'll see you'll get oat milk in seconds. You can even do this with a spoon. And you're getting a high quality oat milk, no additives, no preservatives, 100% organic oat. It's glyphosate free. Uh, it's also non-gluten. So you're getting really great quality, high nutritional value oat milk product without having any of the fuss. You're not dealing with lugging around expensive equipment. You're not even dealing with lugging around a carton of milk. You're taking one of these guys, putting it in your pocket, your purse, and, and you're ready to go. That's going to be really great for travel because, um, not, you know, obviously this is going to be hard to get yeah. they, even if they take it, but those are, like you say, just put it in your purse or your pocket. Yeah. And, and to that point, I think it's, you know, we're really trying to offer a well-rounded product experience. So we have these travel oriented products, but as you pointed out, we have this eight gallon monster here, which is just a, an amazing wow. value, eight pounds, I should say one gallon. It's, it's a great value experience for the customer. If you're really passionate about eating clean, you know, these options and this, bulk size pack out is a really great um, option in terms of uh, economical value. You're getting for each one of these one gallon containers, you're getting 15 quarts of milk. You can even extend that depending on how much paste to water you're using. And then you're getting only the raw material. So we're doing all the heavy lifting by, you know, making sure that it's processed to the highest degree possible, sourcing fantastic raw materials and shipping it directly to your doorstep. That's pretty cool. Eventually, we can find these in stores, you think? We're working on that. Yeah, I think what most likely you'll see the smaller packouts in stores. But interestingly enough, you'll see some of our bigger packouts in a lot of restaurants, cafes and smoothie shops across the country. People are coming to us to help fuel their business uh, and restaurants are using it for all kinds of creative uh, final concoctions. You know, we see ice cream companies coming to us for for all kinds of reasons. But yeah, we're, we're really trying to make this product accessible wherever you can find it and wherever it's easy for the customer. You know, I, I don't know much about uh, retail stores, but I do know that companies uh, compete for shelf space. But it would seem to me that once they get wind of this, you you know, if they need if you go to like a, a store, like it, it can even just a regular grocery store like Rayleigh's, it doesn't have to be like a healthier store like Trader Joe's, Whole Foods or Sprouts. There is such a wide variety of plant milks, right? It's taking up so much room. This seems like it would take up less room and they wouldn't have to worry about the spoilage. 
A hundred percent. And one of the cool things is you could just buy a single unit of these. So if you're, if you're taking, uh, say, if you will, even a CVS, you can have this at the point of sale at the checkout and just grab a single one of these. Or if you're in an airport and you're on the run and you have a, uh, you know, a hungry uh, child with you that you really want to make sure that they're having non-dairy alternatives, these are going to be great options for that. So again, it's all coming to to the idea that we're we're really trying to diversify our product portfolio and make sure that different use cases and different products and different customers are finding uh, a fit for their needs. That's so cool. What's the most popular product so far? Um, we launched with oat uh, with almond many years ago. I'd say in 2019 we had an official almond product out in the market. That's been a huge driver of our success. And more recently, we're seeing our oat powder uh, really become the champion of the brand. Uh, initially, when we had launched, oat milk wasn't a thing. People didn't consume oat milk. It was all about almond and, and soy. Yeah. I, uh, and we're seeing that market evolve. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we're not, you know, almond milk company. We're joy, and we really want to be flexible to people's needs. And that's why we're excited about hemp milk because we think it's a great sustainable solution that's high in protein, high in fiber, and it tastes really great and is versatile for all kinds of needs and people are loving it for their smoothies. That's great. Now, un underneath your green container, there's yellow. Is that a different one than the one I have? That's cashew. Oh, so you're making everything in the bucket now. Yes, everything we make usually comes in a bulk size or a smaller version. Since we just launched the hemp, the hemp is only an eight pound format. Uh, eventually, we'll probably put it into a smaller 15 ounce jar. But as it stands right now, the hemp is in an eight pound format. And one of the great things about this, this bulk pack out size is that it ships for free. You order it on our store, you're getting incredible value in terms of the dollar per fluid ounce or the cents per fluid ounce. Um, and it's shipping directly to your door without having to pay any shipping costs. Wow. Now, speaking of shipping, there is a question from a live viewer uh, named Kate. Do you ship to Canada? We do. We do. We actually offer um, a checkout for Canadian uh, residential locations on our on our website. That's fantastic. And there's another question about how long it lasts. Let me just see which product they're referring to. Um, well, maybe you could just talk about all of them, like the, the shelf life of all of them. It's pretty long. It's at least a year, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, the actually our almonds are even longer, 18 months plus. That's a it's more of best use date by um, the cashew is 12 months and the oat is around the same nine to 12 months. It's a long so, time. Yeah, you can, that's a great thing. You can you never run out of plant milk. You know, it's it's always in your pantry. Um, whenever you need to whip some up. And I should say, just to elaborate on the, the shelf life, that shelf life is true even after opening it. So we've run all kinds of tests and we're getting really high quality yield on the product even after opening it. So you can ensure that you're getting a really great product every time you make it. And once you make it, say you mix the hemp with water, you could put it in your refrigerator and have it last seven to 10 days in your refrigerator. So long as you're not introducing heat to it, you're getting a product that's gonna be there for a couple of days and you can just make it in batches at home once per week. Very cool. Uh, Stephanie goes, how long is my Chef AJ discount of 15% good till? That's good. Yeah, you, uh, we have no All intention of, of They've never off, taken so. it away. Thank you. Uh, Karen who's watching live is a, is a happy customer, says joy is great for anyone who needs small amounts of milk. There you go. Yes, exactly. And we, well, that's one of the reasons we actually brought this to the market. There's that old stereotype of, you know, in the movies. You'd have someone come home from a, a trip a couple days away and then they go to the refrigerator and take a sip of their milk and it's gone bad on them. I think there's a there's a habituation to buying milk and it, it going bad on you or rancid for a variety of different reasons. We really want to empower the customer and give them control to make the milk that's right for them in the quantities that's right for them. So if you're going to go away for a couple of days, you're only going to make um, you know a batch for a day or two. If you're going to be there all week, maybe you make a little bit more. We want to offer that flexibility and enjoy enables you to be you know flexible in that way. Yeah, um, Chaya says, do you ship to South Africa? Not yet. Unfortunately, we do not ship to South Africa. Okay. So it's just United States and Canada for now, right? Right. Correct. Correct. We're always growing, so who knows where we'll be. That is uh, great. Um, Puerto Rico, so Puerto Rico, we do offer as well as uh, Alaska. 
Thank you. And mm -hmm. Stephanie wants to know if you have a time frame when the hemp will be available in a smaller container. That's a great question. We, we don't have a definitive timeline on it. Um, we're always looking at the opportunities in front of us. Uh, for now, it's just a, a manufacturing uh, obstacle that we need to overcome, but it is on our radar. Terrific. And uh, uh, Diana would like to know, does it break or separate once you put it into tea or coffee? It, it, it does a bit because there are no emulsifiers or uh, gums in the product. Um, but, you know, if you stir it, it, it lasts usually for me the whole time I'm drinking a cup of coffee. Now, if you put a pitcher of the hemp milk in your refrigerator, when you wake up the next morning, there will be separation, but you just you don't have to re blend or mix it. You just kind of give it give it a good shake and you're good to go again. Yeah, it's kind of like a cold pressed juice or even, you know, fresh orange juice. You'll see some of that pulp sitting. You just shake the bottle and you'll, you'll be back in action. Nice. And there's a question from uh, um, where to get it. You can get it online and I'm putting links in the chat in the show notes. So just click it. And Connie says, does the little powder packet come in all flavors? So we actually have two flavors right now and we'll be extending the flavors, but it's all oat based. We have a sweetened uh, oat option called our creamer, and we have this uh, single oat flavor, uh, which is just 100% organic oats. And we're we're very keen on expanding that. And feel free to email us or direct message us on Instagram with ideas. Uh, we're looking at it, everything under the sun. Great. And I saw another question. Um, once mixed with water, is there any residue at the bottom of the container? Asks Maxine. Yeah, so you'll again you'll see a little bit of that sediment um but with some agitation you should revitalize the the liquid and, and it'll be homogenized again so you'll you won't see much of that and the key is just to make sure you're you're blending it for 30 seconds in a blender if it's the paste if you're using our instant products uh, a good electric whisk should give you a consistent liquid product wonderful and floor says she loves your product and um, let's see, um, Stephanie says she uses the cashew baked to, base to make cream soups like cream of broccoli. Would hemp do the same? Yes, it will. Um, use it in the same way. And that's, I, I love to cook, so I'm using it in soups all the time. And it's been nice to swap out. First, I would use the almond, then the cashew, and now I've been using the hemp um, as well. But yeah, it adds that creaminess without having to blend anything. You literally just take a scoop and stir it into your pot of, uh, of soup, or if you're making a creamy pasta sauce. Um, tonight for, for dinner, I'm making a summer gazpacho, a green gazpacho actually, and I'm just going to add a scoop in of the hemp and make it even more green and more nutritious and creamy. Terrific. And Marley says, if you hold on, um, if you use a stir, does it break up better? Well, it, I guess I guess it depends on in what what you know what format we're asking. If we're stirring the pastes, for example, it'll it'll bring together some of the oils that might naturally separate before blending. Um, and then if you're mixing it with water. You want to make sure for the pastes that you're using something that has a little bit more agitation, like a blender, and that the uh, the instant oat, for example, is really great with a spoon. You're just going to whip it up for 20 seconds or so, and you're going to have something easy to use. Or you can put this also um, straight into your coffee. Yeah. I just took, um, I was traveling a lot this summer, so I brought these with me on the plane. Um, a, you might want to go a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. So one of the interesting things about um, this product that we developed is how well it dissolves in hot beverages. So if we take a our single oat pouch right here, you can take this on the road with you, have it in an airport, you pour it directly into a coffee, and in a couple of stirs, you're going to get a whitener for your coffee. Um, so this doesn't take any blending. This doesn't take an electric whisk. You could just have a wooden stick in here, a spoon. If you're on an airplane like Christina was, it's going to be a great alternative to those really not uh, good for you creamers that they might have at an airport or at a hotel. 
um, or any kind of place that you're you're, you're going to experience on the road. That is so cool. That you could do it even on the airplane. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Um, the The flight attendants were curious as to what I was doing, so I was I was handing them out like hotcakes, especially to the flight attendants. <laughs> they loved it. That that would be cool. Then maybe the airlines will actually start doing that because even if somebody isn't vegan, a lot of people do have a dairy or a lactose intolerance. Absolutely, so. airlines, hotels, uh, hospitals. Uh, even schools, this this has wide use of applications, especially since it's, you know, not a nut allergen, um, and it's got really great ingredients for you. The story is is really compelling. That's true, because sometimes on planes, they I mean, most I haven't traveled a lot, but they stop serving like the peanuts on the plane because of allergies and do like pretzels now. Exactly, exactly for that reason. So you know, stuff with nuts, unfortunately, it creates some adverse reactions for some folks, and it's it could spread easily. That's one of the beautiful things about oat. It's a sustainable crop. It's also very uh, you know, non-allergen based. Not a lot of folks have, have allergies to it. So it a, it's a, has wide applications. Nice. And this yes. for hemp. We were really excited. This was the first uh, seed uh, milk base that we developed. And we chose it because of the great nutritional content, high on omega-3s and protein. And it's a more a very sustainable crop as well. So that was part of the motivation. So now we have nuts, seeds, and grain milk options for whatever your dietary needs may be. Exactly. And, and one thing that I also mentioned that I know part of your audience um, is interested in, usually Chef AJ, is that because you're controlling how much paste or, or powder you're putting in per amount of volume of water, you can also control how much how many calories you're getting in a in a in your milk like you know exactly what's going into it if you want to customize the flavor you can but you're also controlling exactly you know if you're using it for children they might like a more creamy dense milk if you're just using it for your coffee a splash of milk maybe you want it a little bit lighter so it's it's really easy to to have your your hand um on the knobs here yeah, so mornings I wake up and I want, you know, a really milky experience and I'll put a bunch of joy into my cup of coffee or my water before making uh, my coffee and mix it in as a latte. So it really depends. Every every day is a new kind of choose your own adventure uh, and it makes it fun. It makes the experience, at least for me with coffee specifically or my smoothies, it gives me flexibility and it's not the same old dull routine. I'm, I'm kind of changing it up and having fun with my healthy lifestyle. Nice. Got a few more questions. Are the are, um, Marley wants to know, are the organic oats used also gluten trace free? So it's not a certified gluten free product um, simply due to small, small amounts of potential um, cross contamination at manufacturing facilities, but it is a gluten free sourced uh, raw material. So for the way, the best way to look at it is if you're highly celiac, you're highly celiac, then it might not be the best solution for you. But if you if you're just lightly um, sensitive to gluten or you don't have issues with gluten, then it you're you're not going to experience any adverse reactions. Nice, thank you. And here's a question: Julie wants to know how much it costs. There's not one price because there's different sizes and different products. But if you just click the link. Um, that I've been posting, you'll be able to know. And uh, let's see, I saw a question. Uh, yes, uh, Devorah, Devorah wants to know, can you ship to Israel? Uh, yeah, we're, we're keen on it one day. Hopefully we take over the world with your help. We'll, joy will be in every country, um, but not yet. And, but and we, it, all of our products are certified kosher. And um, especially with the pace, um, I find when um, when I'm cooking for Shabbat or what have you, it it helps you add that creaminess to um, a meal without having to introduce dairy. So you can keep things. If you're making a meat meal, you can keep it meat, but keep but also have that creamy component of your soup because you're using this sort of product instead of something else. As well as with your coffee in the morning. So I I, I love it and it, yeah. So certified kosher. Pick some up the next time you're in the U.S. That is great. 
Okay. Uh, but somebody else could buy it and ship it to them probably, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jay says, are your instant hemp milk and milks, are they sweetened? The only We only have one product that's sweetened. Everything else has zero additives and zero ingredients other than the ingredient listed on the front of the label. So our hemp is 100% hemp, whole hemp seeds. Our cashew is 100% cashew, and our oat is 100% oat. We do have a new one um, that contains organic cane sugar. Um, so that's our only sweetened product, um, and that's called our oat milk creamer. Great. And there's a question, do you have an affiliate program? We do. At the bottom of our website, you'll see an, uh, a link to a website page where you can fill in a form to apply it to become an affiliate. Nice. Okay. We got to tell Dr. Goldhammer about your product, you know, uh, because at the True North Health Center, they're still buying some plant milks in boxes, for example. Well, the soy, you know, it's just soy and water, but he needs to know about this. You know, I got to hook you up because he, you know, he's, he's got like a clinic, you know, and we we love love help, that. help yeah. him and his patients. Absolutely. Yeah. We, I got to somehow uh, do, do that um, because I think that would be helpful. And, and, you know, a question that we get often is, People are skeptical. They say, how can you get, you know, 18 months shelf life out of 100% organic almonds? And, and they say you must be adding something to it, even if it's a little oil or some salt. And because of how Hector described our, our manufacturing process, we're literally using the nut itself to self-preserve the product once it's in a paste and more usable format. So to answer the original question, I mean, there's no oil, there's no salt in, in any of these products that we have here, other than the one that we're, uh, is brand new, that's a creamer, and that is very clear on the label that all the ingredients that it has in it, because we want it to be transparent, um, since our founding principle is, you know, keeping to simple whole foods, which we think that we've preserved in that new product, um, but it's right on the label. Great. Thank you. And there's a question uh, from Diana. Is it like instant oats whereby the health benefits are compromised because of the processing? No, actually, so it's very different from instant oats. Um, so it's it's different from a flour and it's different from instant oats. We're, we're actually going through some unique processes um, that that make it not gummy so it, it's a starch removal process and then we're we're um, using enzymes to just elevate the natural sweetness of the oats without having to add any artificial ingredients so it's it's a very niche and specific process that allows us to create something that we think is truly clean label and delicious nice thank you and this is a great question from Liz. And I think I mentioned this to you a long time ago. Would you ever consider selling a sampler pack? Yes. In fact, we, we should have one soon for our powdered formats. Um, well, you'll be able to buy a handful of these for a really low introductory price. And I would say if you're looking for the best value in terms of our offers, um, the subscribe and save program is an amazing uh, vehicle to be able to unlock really great savings. All of our products are available to purchase um, at a 15% discount with your 15% discount included on top of it um, and unlock free shipping. So it's, it's just an amazing way to ensure that you're getting the milk that's right for your needs on a recurring basis. Um, and making sure that you're saving as much money as possible by doing so. Nice. All right. Have you guys gone and to, have you ever gone to those like fancy food shows, like the ones they have in San Francisco and Anaheim? We've never showcased there. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for, for why not those, those, uh, natural expos are really great for trying to get your product into retail. We have an unconventional business model where we're working directly with really great food service uh, operators, as well as selling our websites, uh, our products on websites and and through e-commerce. But one day we think it'll make sense for the brand. And in fact, we might be participating at Expo East this year in a small format. Cool. You can keep putting your questions in the chat if you have them. Okay, uh, Kate says, what are the health differences between cashew and almond milk? 
Hmm. So I'd have to go back to the label, but yeah, they, they're, they, they, go ahead. it's very slight. Um, they're very comparable in nutritional profile um, in both in uh, the macros content between the protein, the fiber, and the in the fat content. Um, it's just due to the nature of the nut. Um, almond, you're going to get the highest protein content uh, per serving ratio. And fiber, I think. And as well. fiber as well. So almond's one of those things. And that's why we launched the business around almond. It's just a really fantastic raw material. You know, it. I think. One of the important factors about how we operate our business, especially when it comes to almond, is that we source our products from from farmers who use really um, uh, water uh, preservation uh, practices and irrigation practices that are very water light. So, for example, they have a sprinkler right in front of the almond tree and it's just getting that almond tree as opposed to, you know, having sprinklers getting uh, every single part of the tree and on the soil in different places. So it's it's very precise irrigation practices that yield a really great product. Um, and the almond is one of those raw materials that if you're if you're if you're if you're farming it really well and you're sourcing really great uh, almond uh, raw material, you're going to get a really great nutritional profile. And you know we've chosen to build a business around almond uh, initially because of how great its profile was right off the bat. So you're getting great pro, uh, protein content, fiber content, and fat content in the almond. The cashew is similar, slightly less in those factors, but it has a slight sweetness that the almond doesn't have. So that's why some people gravitate to the cashew versus the almond because it's lightly sweeter and it's a great way to have a more decadent, indulgent milk experience without adding sweetener to it. Yeah, I like the taste better. Not 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 necessarily because it's your product, but just in general, I've always yeah. preferred the taste of cashew milk to almond milk. Absolutely. We we do also have on our blog um, a couple of articles that um, registered dietitians have written that outline the nutritional value specifically of cashew, almond, hemp, oat, um, and I was actually just reading up this week. If I'm not mistaken, I was reading up on prebiotic foods and both cashew and almond were on the list which i found interesting and oh no, and, uh, and of course oh yes nice mona says will there ever be a soy option you know soy is interesting um maybe you know i personally have been experimenting with soy and i really enjoy the soy products um so i think i think soy is a very uh, interesting raw material to take a look at and in fact, in many parts of the country, in parts of the world, they use soy pastes and have for hundreds of years, if not millennia, um, to make milk. You know, and I bring that up because this is one of the most, uh, the oldest ways of making plant milk. Today, what you're getting in the in boxed format is is uh, you know technology gone. You know, some people can argue awry, but you know, our, or we're going back to basics, and soy is one of the the older. Uh, milk options out there and it, it's got some really interesting benefits and, and flavor profiles so perhaps um and I, i'd be curious what your audience um would love to see in terms of another uh just one ingredient paste um we're always toying around with different ideas of nuts seeds and even other grains so curious everyone's welcome to shoot us an email or or dm us on our instagram with with their thoughts absolutely yeah. I, I mean, I, I personally don't use coconut milk because it's so high in saturated fat, but have people wanted that in your format? Yes, uh, coconut milk, uh, it's its one of those highly demanded products as well. Coconut's interesting because it kind of falls outside of the nut seeds and grain realm. It's kind of a fruit. It's kind of, it has its own, you know, quirks uh, behind how to use it. it uh, so, you know, it's something that that we're, we're always taking a look at and, and people really enjoy the flavor. Okay, I have an idea, but I'm, I wonder if I should tell you private because then if I then if you do it, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get nothing. But okay, no, yeah. no, well, you always have our, our you have our cell phones. So. Okay, well, you, okay, this is gonna sound really weird, but it's actually a thing, and I've made it. There's two things: potato milk and zucchini milk. Ah, zucchini, zucchini is interesting. I haven't heard. potato potato we've seen a lot of interesting starch. 
Uh, but the, the zucchini is the first, I think, for me. So, yeah. so, so when I've run out of, and I've done a video on this, when I've run out of milk, you know, because I don't live near a store anymore, and this is before I knew you, you can actually make milk out of zucchini, and it's white, and it's creamy, and you can use it, like, in your baked goods. But I, I've never tasted potato milk, but I've seen it, and I, and they sell it, and there's, because, I mean, that would be kind of cool, I think, potato milk. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I love things that are lower in fat. Yeah, and potato is kind of similar to oat in that it's a very starchy uh, product. So that that has some characteristics to it that can lend itself to making milk. Uh, and it can also be, there's a lot of potato varieties, so you can get a really sweet option for that as well. So the sweet yeah. potato milk. Get on it, get on it, Hector. <laughs> I'm staring at the potatoes in my in my bin right off camera, <laughs> thinking to myself, hmm, I have to go make that. Too, too, many, op too many things to milk, too little time. That's so funny. Um, Molly says, are the oats glyphosate free? They are. We use glyphosate free organic oats. Nice. And Jay says you could make dream whip out, dream whip out of the soy powder. I don't, I don't, that's interesting. Maybe you could do it out of the oat powder. And Christine says, I make a yummy cashew based ranch dressing, but I need to stay away from nuts. Can I use joy as a base? If so, how would you thicken it? Um, it's already pretty thick, Christina. Yeah, especially the if you're using the, the hemp um, would be a non-nut alternative. We even have a ranch dressing um recipe on our recipe blog. And the oat, I think you could probably just use the oat and it would thicken up in the same way. I haven't tried that. I'll, I'll give it a whirl. Nice. And can you make a, yeah, so the, it, she, he wanted to know, can you make a dream whip out of it? I mean, I don't know. I, you know, sky's the limit. We've been able to do some really amazing recipes um, with our products. So it, it, it takes a little bit of creativity and thinking outside of the box, but the best way to think about our products, it's 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 a plant fat. So anything you can use uh, that you would no normally use fat for is is something you can use our products, and it doesn't have this roasted cooked flavor profile. You have a slightly sweet natural flavor profile, and in the format of a plant fat that is really great for culinary applications. And the sky's the limit. We have people making kombucha with our products, so uh, you can do all kinds of things. Wow. Marianne says, have you considered a soy milk concentrate? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I think soy milk's uh, a really fantastic thing to, to take a look at and explore. Nice. And Marley says, if you sign up for a subscription, can the delivery frequency be adjusted or changed? Yes. Uh, whenever you like, it can be adjusted. You can choose specific days. Um, you can choose certain frequencies uh, and it, you could cancel whenever and resubscribe whenever. So it's a very flexible program, no strings attached. Nice. And Karen says the cashew base works great in her nice cream mixes. Do you have a product at Costco right now? We did. We did. We did a short run in the Pacific Northwest um, as a seasonal launch for the new year. We actually did this product. Nice. Um, Gina saw it there. She said, not knowing anything about it, she was able to snag the last six bags. And so she's very glad to have it. Good, thank <laughs> Amazing. You. Thank you for the support. Thanks. Um, we actually uh, launched this product for the first time in Costco. Um, and we did it as a season run, kind of test the waters with retail. Beautiful. Kate says, what is the difference between the organic and almond milks and almond based milks? So you, you have one that's organic and one that's not organic of the same product, in other words? Correct. Correct. The flavor profile is exactly the same. Um, the manufacturing techniques are the same. Uh, it really comes down to just sourcing different raw materials. And the reason we have two is just the price points. Um, again, you know, we want to be an accessible product for everyone. So having an organic uh, certified product is just slightly more expensive. So we wanted to make sure we had a non-organic for folks, you know, making sure that the economy is tough and it's difficult. And sometimes, you know, people need to save a buck and we absolutely get it. We're those people too. And we wanted to offer really great value oriented products. Great. Uh, Holly says, are any of your products sprouted or raw or, and is the processing a heating process? So the process is not a heating process. That said, raw is a very um, finicky term uh, in the United States because all almonds need to be pasteurized in some format or another. 
um, just due to contaminants, potential contaminants and, and general health concerns, especially when you have large food supply uh, operations. So they're lightly steam pasteurized and blanched. Uh, so that's a light heat process, very flash steam, so it's very quick. And then we use a cold milling process to break it down. So it's not undergoing additional excessive heat. So we really try to keep the heat, um, the heat uh, inputs very, very low uh, and making sure that we're not breaking down the raw material. Um, so it's a, we can go all day about raw and not raw. It's, it's more of a technical term, but at the end of the day, we have a safe product that has undergone very little heat exposure. And, and you can see that by the color of, this is the almond base. You can see it on the bottom there. It's very light. And that's a testament to the fact that it's pretty much as close to the US will let you be raw in the United States as you can be. Yeah, right. I remember that about the almonds. Uh, let's see. Uh, Marley says, you're in Miami. I'm very close. Can this only be purchased by the internet or is there a Miami location? There's no physical location for the, for the product yet. Um, but though we are sold in a couple of bulk stores in Miami, um, Verde and um, are we still in the, the place sure. in Win one? But yeah, you can buy it in, in, in the bulk, bring your own container kind of refillery shops in Miami. But shoot us a note, we'll let you know. I think that there's one or two other places that you can pick up a jar. Terrific. And there's a question. What is your Instagram? I can't find it under joy. I'll put that in the chat right now and in the show yeah, notes. A-D-D-J-O-Y. Add joy is the Instagram handle. Thank you. Uh, does Okay. Yeah. Mona is saying, does the hemp come in smaller sizes? Not yet, but it will. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's a question. And again, for the, the hemp, you're, it's although it's your, it's a lot of product to commit to up front. It's a great value in terms of the price per serving. And again, we're taking care of the shipping. It's free uh, for that, that purchase. So you're getting a really economical choice if you intend to use it in a variety of different ways at home. Yeah. Um, one of the top, sorry. Oh, go ahead. One of the um, top reasons, people, um, ways people have been using the hemp is directly into their smoothies. So you don't need to make the hemp milk first or separately, you can just add it to your blender with your smoothie ingredients and add however much liquid you like um, to make your smoothie more or less watery and you're literally making homemade hemp, hemp milk while you're blending up your smoothie nice okay just posted the instagram link um will at some point linda wants to know all your products be available at costco Maybe, maybe not. Um, that's that's hard for us to say. There's the, the Costco overlords that, that have more of a, a hand to say in that. Uh, but I think you know the we're Costco. we wanna we're more targeted on on a Whole Foods and a Sprouts uh, for certain product lines. Not every product has the right fit for retail, so you're gonna see a, a variety of different things from us. This more likely will be a retail product into its future versus these eight pounders, but who knows? We're always exploring options that are right for the business. Uh, we're a small business. We started in 2019. We've grown tremendously since then. We're focused on getting product to people in the most efficient way possible. And that doesn't necessarily mean retail all the time. Well, I like the Costco overlords. <laughs> you know, it's even having to drive to your, to your local grocery store and pick up a carton of refrigerated almond milk that costs money and burns gasoline and burns electricity having to run that refrigerated um you know refrigerator in the store so we think that having it shipped directly to your doorstep in a concentrate at the end of the day is also better for the environment nice thank you Let's see. Somebody's saying the link isn't working, but I, I keep posting it and, it and I would like other people to try it. She's saying it. she's getting some kind of warning when she says the website is not using a, a secure uh, connection. That's it. That, that happens on brow some browsers occasionally. I'm not sure why we're, a, you know, we're a Shopify backed store. 
meaning all of the payment information is encrypted. There's no, there's no weirdness going on. These are, you know, multi-billion dollar credit card processing uh, technologies. I would just say to try a different browser um, and that might be a better bet. We're also- I wish- mm -hmm. I wish- Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was just- Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I wish somebody else would try the link, even if they don't order, just to confirm that it is working. Because okay. I, I keep trying it from my phone and the computer, and it takes me right to the page. Got it. Yeah, it, it sometimes is a browser issue or your connectivity issues. Um, yeah, I, it's it's hard to tell uh, from here, but we have we have plenty of users on the website on a daily basis, so... I would imagine. Yep. Kelly's saying it works good for her. She's on Chrome. It worked for Diana. So I think it might just be a, like, like, like Hector said, you're where you're trying to access it from. And Stephanie said, can you or will you put the cashew or hemp or almond paste in single serving packages? It's a, it, the single serve package um, is a unique uh, processing technology that we're applying to this. Perhaps one day we're looking at everything. Uh, so your, your voice is, uh, and your customer's voice and your audience, the more feedback we get and the more demand uh, that we have direct engagement with is, uh, is really great fuel for us to pursue certain directions. So if, if there's a want for it, we'll figure it out. Okay. Did you, are you going to show like any product or how to use it or a recipe or? Yeah, we can whip up some quick, um, hemp milk for you. We have a little smoothie uh, recipe that we put together. So why don't we show just how to make the hemp milk first so you can see how easy that is. This is what this is. We've been going through this. So there's a little bit of a demo bucket, but nice green coloration, which magically also turns very white when you turn it into well, interesting. milk. Interesting. Why, why is hemp green? Because in nature, it's white, isn't it? This is the whole hemp seed. So you'll see a uh, hemp seed with the hull on it and it'll be white. But if you dehusk that, you'll see um, a it's slightly green, green and white seed. Seed on the inside. It has both colors. It has a dark green and, a, and white to it. So all we're doing is added some water, about two cups. So my kids like it creamy. So I'll save this for them. We're just gonna add a couple of scoops of the hemp milk paste. Woo! I'm splashing. And when I make this at home, I usually do five cups of water uh, and around five scoops of joy. And I'll put that in a pitcher and I'll just put that in my refrigerant and have it for the, for the entire week. So We're doing a slightly less version of that, uh, smaller quantity of that. Uh, oh, Diana, I'm, asking, I'm sorry, Diana's, I just don't want to miss the questions because they're important. Diana's asking if you're using room temperature water or does it matter? Great question. Cold water is preferred, but you can use um, warm water or, or room temperature water. What's key is that you don't over blend it. You just want quick 20 to 30 seconds in the blender. Why? Because any more time in the blender is going to create a little bit of heat and we don't want that happening. So cold or room temperature water is fine. 20 to 30 seconds of blending is, is perfect. If I'm using room temperature, sometimes I'll add an ice cube. Um, and it, and really at the end of the day, what that does is that it makes sure that your milk lasts in your refrigerator the longest amount possible after it's made. So at least seven to 10 days. So all we have to do now to make the milk is run this for 20 seconds. It's gonna be um, a bit loud. I probably won't run it that long, um, but just so everyone can see how quickly you make the milk. I'm in a hurry. I do it for far less. Uh, it all depends on, on the experience you're looking for. But it, like I mentioned, you'll get a, a white, very white milk. Yeah, it's creamy, delicious. It smells great, too. It's a very go. earthy, great product. Uh, if, you're, if you're like me and you don't want to have a protein powder in your smoothie that has... It's unfortunate because you'll have a smoothie with, let's say, you know, strawberries, bananas, uh, spinach, 
but you'll add a protein powder in it that has 15 different ingredients, including some gums and binders. You're like, I don't, I don't want all of that. Hemp is a great way to unlock some really great proteins without having to sacrifice additional ingredients and additives and gives it a nice creaminess so you can have a really enjoyable experience. And it did, it did blend up nice and white. Yeah. Yep, still got it here. It'll, it'll sit like this for, for up to an hour and then maybe, maybe you'll see some slight separation at the bottom, but just swirl the cup or, or shake it and you're, you're back, back in action. Some of the people are saying they would, oh, sorry. All right, go ahead. Some of the people are saying they would prefer a, a samples or small sizes of everything. But then if your if your reason for doing this is for packaging, that kind of defeats it, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's a little bit of a balance. And so, for example, even on the packaging, we use um, what's called a post-consumer recycled material. So this is material that has had a second life. So, you know, we, we actually started with plastic with our glass jars and we moved with our jars. Then we went to glass because of sustainability initiatives. It's a more expensive uh, format, but we thought it was important for the consumer. And then with this, we're actually taking plastic um, that has been recycled and reusing it um, so that we're finding sustainable, um, more costly uh, solutions for us, but we think it's important. So yes, we, we wanna balance both the value oriented ones, which is on a price per fluid ounce basis, this is a great value. But the, the smaller sachets, you might be paying slight premium for it, but it is um, less of a commitment, if you will. So it's just different sides of the value spectrum. Terrific. So he, he keeps asking, will this whip up? Like, like, and I, I just to make a whip topping, will it thicken enough to make a whip topping? I, I'm not on its own, I don't yeah. think. So there's, there are vegan, uh, um, uh, they're vegan foam agita uh, agents. One of them is called Magic Foam. If you Google Magic Foam, you should come to a really interesting website. It's, it's an expensive product, uh, but you'll, you might get a nice froth. Our creamer product has pectin in it, um, uh, which is a fruit fiber, which also lends itself to creating a slightly aerated foam-like consistency. But, you know, with the question on specifically foam, you, you get a wide array of what foam is to people and what, you know, how dense you want it. Um, typically to achieve that, you're, you're going to need some sort of agent, um, that, that, you know, makes it a little bit more aerated and, and, and dense in a, in a traditional whipped way. Thank you. Uh, Linda saying she makes chocolate chia seed pudding using your oat milk powder with water. And I've asked her to post the recipe. It sounds delicious. And, um, Molly says, could I add cacao powder to make chocolate hemp milk? Why not? For yeah. sure. All day. And people are asking about what about tiger nut milk? Have you thought about that? Tiger nut has been on our, on absolutely on our radar. We think tiger nut's a great product. Um, Yes, absolutely. Tiger Nut is, is special and interesting. And Jesse's saying, what is the expiration date on the big tub of product? So it, depending on the flavor, but it'll range between 12 and 18 months uh, use by date. Great. Well, best, and, best by. Best by date. Because I, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I, I keep mine around for longer. Not that, not that I do. We go through it so quickly, but I've had some tubs sit around just for my own knowledge and to to experiment and they're good they're good for a long 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 time longer than what we say it's good for christina has pails and pails of all kinds of secret concoctions that we've made over the years uh and they they, they tend to last a very yeah, long time very using long. our processes yeah years <laughs> terrific deb is saying is oat and hemp the only dry powder only oat is powder the rest is paste right correct we do for food service have an almond milk powder that we have not launched for consumers yet only due to how how big uh, the quantities are but that might be something on our on our radar for the future Right. Uh, Connie's saying are there additives in their protein powder? First of all, they don't use any additives. Second, they don't make protein powder. And Mona's saying she's concerned about the large tub of hemp base, not after mixing. Not sure what that means. So maybe clarify. 
and uh, somebody Daria suggesting aquafaba to whip things up. And oh, yeah, actually, Diana, yeah, she loves, Diana says she loves learning about quality products that make it easier in this crazy world. Oh, and Angel Angelica says, do you ship to APO addresses? I'm not sure what that is. PO yeah. addresses, yes, we do on she, our website. She's saying APO. Is that something different? The letter A, the letter P, the letter O, APO. Um, I'm I'm not sure. A post office, perhaps. A I'm not sure. Maybe it's a military thing. Let's see. Oh yes, Army Post Office. Sorry. Army post office. We're, we're yeah. kind of yeah. so typically we should without issue, and we have. But if there ever is a concern or an issue, you can reach out to our customer service team. There's a chat on our website or our customer service email and uh, we can help you with any any it shipping might make a difference where this army post office is because if it's not in the united i'm thinking could it not be in the united states uh, yeah it's military sorry that we didn't know that and thank you for your service and uh there is a protein powder that popped up as an add-on I'm not sure where that popped up. Um, I don't think it's on their website. So we do offer, um, we have a marketplace of like-minded brands. So friends of our company that we sell um, non-joy products. So it's products that we feel have been vetted that are really high quality. So you have cause uh, protein on there. They have a vanilla and chocolate flavor. Um, those are all really great sources of protein. They're just sold by different brands. And uh, we offer those products as additional add-ons on our website. Wonderful. So some people are saying APO military could be overseas. So that's the thing. Good um, but anyway, we, you maybe contact the company. They're very nice and they'll, I'm sure they'll get back to you. Very cool. Do you want to make anything else with your wonderful products? We wanted to um, show how easy it is to make a smoothie, um, especially if you're only using... Uh, plant-based milks for your smoothies or for your coffee or whatever you don't need to make it in advance you just you keep it on hand and what you would do is add whatever amount of liquid usually would add to your smoothie I like mine kind of thick um, and we pre put together this is strawberries raspberries some frozen cauliflower spinach and chia seeds and we've got tons of smoothie recipes also on our recipe blog, but you would add whatever smoothie ingredients you like. I have a question. Why, why cauliflower? I've never put cauliflower into my smoothie, maybe. Because it makes it really um, creamy. It doesn't add any flavor. So I especially like to do that for my kids. Um, and you're getting the nutrition of the cauliflower vegetable. And you can't really taste cauliflower or zucchini in a smoothie. Yeah, especially if it's frozen. I keep, you know, I just buy the, or, or I freeze. I have everything. My freezer looks like a, I don't know what, <laughs> grocery store freezer. And then um, you're going to make your hemp milk right in with your smoothie. So you're just adding a scoop of our hemp paste and just blend it up. This way you don't have to keep any milk on hand. You don't have to buy a box milk. You don't have to make milk in advance. Some people we've seen are just smoothie. They only buy plant milk to have for their smoothies. So this is a great kind of hack to have this product on hand, take a scoop, put it into your smoothies, add water and make the milk all together as opposed to making milk in advance. Now making milk in advance is great because you have something available to add to your cereal, to add to your coffee. You can add it to your, your smoothie, but that, you know, entails um, a wider variety of use cases for the milk. I'm just gonna let her rip. Can't beat a Vitamix. Mm -hmm. And that's it. No need to buy. And See, I bet the cauliflower makes it. No, I was just going to say that the color itself, we, we, send, we tend to see that when you use our products, you get a really vibrant smoothie. Say if you're using berries or, or what have you, you'll get a very vibrant, you know, colorful looking healthy smoothie. When you use boxed milk, it, for some reason it turns gray. 
you get a grayer coloration on it. And I think it's just true to the nature of, you know, buying really sourcing really great raw materials. You're going to get something that, you know, looks good and feels good when you consume it. Nice. And I bet the cauliflower helps to make it creamier too. It does. It does. That's a new one. I got to try that out. Oh, that's like a favorite say and the and the zucchini too. That's a great hack. It's just getting in those veggies. Absolutely. Sneak them in. Uh, Lula says, can I find this at Whole Foods? Not yet, but we hope. One day, one day. We're, we'll, we're on our way there. We are on Amazon, which is a Whole Foods, uh, well, yeah, I guess the Whole, Whole Foods parent company. Um, but uh, the best way in terms of value for this product, and you get to use the Chef AJ discount code, is uh, directly on our website. Thank you. Uh, Sarah says, it's definitely made traveling simpler. I'm heading out and I'll be bringing a container of my Joy Oat Milk with us on the plane for our week of travel. Amazing. Yeah. And check out if you, they haven't already, the single serve. These are fresh off the press. We just made them. They launched just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and these are the great option for travelers. It's the exact same products as this one, just in a smaller footprint, in a smaller size, um, and very, very travel friendly. They're not going to hold you up at the uh, at the TSA. at the TSA at the security line. You'll be able to walk right through and have your your oat on hand. Yeah, that's good. Well, thank you. These are just really fun and helpful products that you've created. Absolutely, thank you, thank, thank you. you to your audience. Thank you for the time and the platform. It's, it's yeah, really well, we wish you every success. It's fun to see your your rise of a success because I remember we just started out with the two products and then you're just growing and growing. Your mother will be very proud. No. <laughs> trying hard. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chef AJ. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, it's thank been you. a pleasure. Thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time for Dr. Joel Furman. Now, Dr. Furman has been on the show many times and he always does a wonderful job. But tomorrow he's actually going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation. He's never done that before on my show, but I asked him to please give it because it was fabulous. It's about self-destructive eating and the social pressure to eat dangerously. You won't want to miss it.